hi buds happy tuesday uh if you are watching this video it means that you were able to get home safely and you weren't swept away by a gigantic guy. so way to go uh we're getting in six and our strategy or our target lesson six is uh we are going to be continuing to subtract fractions the twist now um, is that our fraction, our initial fraction, is going to be a, an improper fraction. So in lesson five, we had really simple, lovely, concise fractions um, that we were working with. And then now as we move into lesson six, we're going to still continue that modeling with subtraction, X, you know, crossing out uh, the parts that we're taking away. Um, but we're going to begin with mixed, no, we're going to be begin with improper fractions which means, you guys know this, uh, that the fractions are larger than one. So the modeling will get a little bit more complicated, um, but you're ready for it, and let's do this. Here we go. Here we go. Lesson five is underway. Um, we are, so we have lesson five, just to give you a little overview, is going to be covered in class on Wednesday. Um, L, no, that's not right. What is Back it up. Let's see. We did L5 on Tuesday. Right now, we're in lesson six. There we go. So, in class, uh, we, so this video focuses on lesson six. Tomorrow in class, we will work on lesson six uh, together. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Uh, lesson seven will be Thursday. That's going to be multi-step problem solving. That multi-step problem solving is going to involve subtraction and addition uh, modeling. And then we are going to have uh, Friday will be our review for our COL. Um, so we will review. And then we will celebrate all of the amazing, think of how far we've come, you guys, just in this module. We've learned a lot of really cool things. Monday will be our mid-module COL. Cool. And then Tuesday, we will continue with lesson eight. And uh, let's check this one out, you guys. So we are looking at subtraction. That's this fancy sign right there. And just like I said, our uh, initial number, what we're starting with is a mixed number. I was kind of tripping over my words because um, these are mixed numbers right now, but we're going to sort of code them into improper fractions. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, so here we have one and three eighths, and then we're going to take away one half. So uh, let's go ahead and model one and three eighths. You guys know that one and three eighths, because of that whole number one is going to require more than one rectangle. Uh, so we have one, and then we're also going to need our three eighths. So the denominator here is eight. So we are going to go ahead and divide our rectangles into hopefully eight equal columns. It's not looking so good for me. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm gonna have to pull some tomfoolery. Here, eight, oh, lordy, two, four, six, eight. We'll pretend that those are the same size. I will try, oh goodness sakes, I can't even let that one slide. Let's try again here. I'm still working on straight lines. We all have our challenges, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so I'm going to, oh, I didn't want that, I don't even know what that does. Um, I'm going to use a new tool that I haven't used, uh, much. I'm going to use this kind of, um, marker tool to shade in one hole first. So we're going to shade in, oh, I guess I'm going to shade in one hole. I'm going to change the colors so we can definitely see what our original boxes were and what our shaded fractions are. So one and three eighths, we're going to have eight eighths shaded in, eight columns. But that number is more than just one whole or eight eighths, it's also three eighths. 
So this mixed number is, as you guys know, larger than one. So this, is requi this requires two rectangles in order to properly model that. So we have in blue, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. We have in blue our one and three eighths. And now you guys, typically from here, um, we would just go ahead and, well, typically we would just introduce our second fraction. Our second fraction, we're taking away one half. Um, the denominator in one half is two, so we would have two rows. Um, and then I would, why did I choose Seahawks color? Um, go ahead and just shade in one half here. You guys know how to do that. Here's the interesting twist with lesson six. We'll pretend like that's perfection. Here's the interesting twist with one, um, lesson six. We have, we're starting with one and three eighths and we're taking away one half. So believe it or not, you guys, we actually don't even need to introduce this second model. Because we're not, we don't even have one half. What we're doing is taking away one half. So what we actually need to do, my friends, yes, I just crossed out that one half model. What we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and save ourselves a step and lay halves on top of our eighths. Because again, we don't have one half. What we're doing is taking away one half from our one and three eighths. Okay, so let's look at, um, and in order to do that, of course, we need a common denominator. Let's go ahead and look at exactly what one and three eighths looks like. So one and three eighths is in blue. We have <clears throat> two rows here of eight. So we have 16 here. Um, so th these boxes are now separated into 16 smaller boxes. The blue shaded boxes, however, are larger than 16 because, um, <laughs> oh, Mr. Calamaris is thanking me for magic potion. Um, we have more than 16 boxes. We have 16 boxes here, and then we have 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 boxes. So we've shown that 1 and 3 eighths is equal to 22 sixteenths, an improper fraction, because it's larger than 1. Now what we're going to do, you guys, is take away 1 half. We've laid halves on top of our eighths by splitting uh, our columns into now 1, 2 rows. And we've done that to both rectangles because we need to um, look at 1 and 3 eighths, not just the one here. And now what we're going to do, you guys, is we're going to take away one half. Let's go ahead and shade in one half using this fancy marker. One half, you guys, is one row. We have two rows and one half is going to be one row. So now I've colored one half in and green, and what we need to do is take that away. So it would be much more helpful to actually take it away. I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do red because that's gonna be misrepresentative. So we're taking away now one half. So we have one um, entire row being taken away. And I'm modeling that ticking away with X's and I'm X'ing out each individual box because I want you guys to think about hmm um, exactly how many boxes have we removed. So let's go ahead and look at the, oh no, I pressed the button. Oh no, oh no, that darn button. I'd love to actually learn more about what this button does besides make my life super complicated. This button oh, kills me. Um, so let's look at our common denominator, or let's look at the equivalent fraction for one half. So one half is this one row shaded in green. We found that one half is equivalent to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just counting the green boxes. This entire rectangle is separated into 16 smaller boxes. Okay, so what we're looking at here, you guys, is that one and three eighths is equivalent to 22 sixteenths, if you count all of the blue boxes, which we did. And one half is equal to eight sixteenths. That's that green row there. So if we rewrite our expression, 
uh, we're looking at 22 sixteenths minus 8 sixteenths. And we've shown taking away the 8 sixteenths with those uh, blue X's over the boxes. And now what are we left with? Well, uh, let's go ahead and just think about here on the side, what is 22 minus 8? 22 minus 8, 12 minus 8 is 4. And then 1 minus nothing is 1. So according to our calculations, 22 minus 8 is 14 sixteenths. Let's see if indeed that's how many blue boxes we have left over. Um, I'm going to grab another color. Um, let's see if we hopefully have 14 blue boxes left over. So that's not going to work. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm trying to circle this. I know this is kind of uh, wide. 5, 6, 7, 8. Great. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Indeed, I've just modeled 22 uh, sixteenths minus 8 sixteenths is equal to 14 sixteenths. Booyah! Let's look at one more. Actually, we're going to look at two more, but one at a time. Hold your horses. Okay, big kids, uh, between the time that I wrapped up that first problem and now, which has been mm, about 28 seconds, I've decided that we're just going to do one more here because I feel like you guys are doing an awesome job with modeling. Um, and I feel like we just need one more problem right now and then in class tomorrow we'll do some more. So I selected a word problem. Um, you guys know with any word problem for the rest of your life, you have to read it. Then I guess, well, I'll just, we'll talk about it for the rest of fifth grade. I can only speak for now. You have to draw something and then you'll have to write your answer. This reading and the writing your answer will never change. Depending on where you are in your mathematical career, the middle step um, might change. But drawing is so helpful because it gives you a really clear concept of what's going on in the problem. Um, this problem stars our, um, who have I not used in a problem yet? Um, this problem stars our very own, gosh, I need to take a survey of who's been in a problem. I'm thinking Jackson, um, the humble fifth grade billionaire that owns a big hotel in Chicago. Uh, okay, so Jackson, I don't know if you guys know this, but had one and a half meters of rope. Wow. He cut off five-eighths of a meter and used it for a project. Hmm, I wonder what kind of project. How much rope does he have left? Okay, cool. So we've read the problem. Check. Next step, let's draw something. I'm going to draw a rope. And then we're going to model. Um, so Jackson has originally all together draw one of these fancy lines. Um, actually, I'm going to do that at the bottom. So Jackson has all together one and a half meters of rope. One and one half meters. Um, he cut off, who knows why, this is not proportional. He cut off five eighths of the meter. And we want to know what, how much rope does he have left for his next project. Okay, so we're looking for this question mark. I think you guys are already uh, putting together the expression that will support uh, us finding the question mark piece of the rope. Our expression for this is going to be one and one half minus what he cut off, five eighths. And the answer will give us the question mark. You guys are probably immediately recognizing the fact that these denominators are not the same. Life is not simple for us anymore. We can't just move forward and do the subtraction. First, we have to find a common denominator so then we can evaluate this expression. I'm not afraid of that. I uh, am happy to use the area model to model these fractions. In fact, I have a great amount of pride in my modeling. Um, my lines are looking pretty straight. So this is 
that special lesson six twist, we're not going to introduce five eighths because we're not actually, we don't have five, five eighths in this problem. What we're doing is taking away five eighths from our one and one half. So let's show one and one half first. The denominator, of course, is going to dictate how we slice these rectangles up. The denominator, bossy as it is, is saying, I demand two columns in each rectangle. So two columns we shall have. Let's go ahead and do our shading with my really um, impressive marker tool. That I cannot believe I've waited so long to use. Um, so we're going to shade one whole rectangle because one and one half consists of one whole rectangle plus one half of a rectangle. So visually we've just shown so beautifully one and one half. Also, there we go. Uh, so we've just shown one and one half. Now what we need to do, also what I would like to point out is one and one half is equal to one, two, three halves. If we were to change this to black, if we were to rewrite one and one half as an improper fraction, which we, I would like for us to do just to kind of simmer on that, one and one half is clearly equal to three halves. There's two different ways that you can express that fraction. So cool. Now we're going to express the fraction in a different way after we lay eighths. Why eighths? Well, because we're taking away five eighths. And now we're going to lay eight rows on top of both of these rectangles because both of these rectangles represent one and one half. So now I'm going to take uh, my pen, watch me, and I'm going to lay the best in the most, the neatest way I know how, eight rows on top of our halves. How am I doing so far, guys? So I have one, two, three, four, five. Oh gosh, I was so close. One, two, three, four, five, six, yikes, seven, eight. Was that eight? Oh, yeah, yikes. Why are my models so small? Am I trying to compete with Ethan and Olivia? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is the zoomed in version that this lady needs. Okay, so I've got eight. I have eight there. And now, heavens, I have to I'm going to zoom in for this. Mm, 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 mm. Lay eight rows on top of my one half. Uh, I think this should be a little bit easier. Yikes. One, two. Is this fun to watch me draw these wiggly lines? Three. Okay. Four. A little bit better than the first one. Five. We need eight rows total. And then we have six. <gasps> Ooh. Besides the bumpiness, I feel like I kind of nailed that one. Okay, good. So now I've laid our eight rows on top of our halves. Zoiks. Forgetting that I have my pen. Um, thus revealing, wait for it, wait for it. Thus revealing our um, equivalent fractions. So, yes, one half, one and one half is equal to three halves, but we're looking for common denominators so that we can evaluate uh, this here expression. So one and one half is also equal to how many shaded boxes do we have now? Well, first we had one and one half, but clearly now we have many, many more. Our denominator is going to be the amount of boxes that this rectangle is now divided into. I have two columns with eight rows. So we have an array of eight times two. So we have this rectangle now divided into 16 boxes. How many yellow boxes do we have? Well, I have 16 here, and then we have 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. One and one half is also equal to 24 16. Now, you guys, we're going to have to look at five eighths. We're taking away five eighths. Five eighths is going to be five rows. That's it, five rows out of our whole. Five eighths is going to be five 
one, two, three, four, five. You guys have no idea how close I am leaning into my computer screen right now. It's kind of embarrassing. My nose is practically touching the screen. Um, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. We're going to take away five eighths. So that means that we're actually going to, we've laid our eighths on top already. Now we're actually going to cross out five rows. So I'm going to, not only are we going to cross out five rows, we're not going to do just one giant X. We're going to cross out and these like really funny stretched out X's. We're going to cross them out in individual boxes. And it's really funny how stretched out these boxes are. So there's my first five <laughs> crossed out, but we, I'm going to cross out individual boxes and I'll talk to you exactly. Uh, I'll talk to you about why here in just a second once I figure out the rest of these hilariously stretched out survey X's. Okay, so if you really extend your imagination, you're going to see these boxes crossed out. Do you guys see how I crossed out one, two, three, four, five rows, but I didn't just do a giant X across them. I crossed out five rows. I crossed out each box within those five rows. Um, I now need to count how many boxes we crossed out. Well, one, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That makes sense because I crossed out five rows of two columns, which is equal to 10. So what we've just shown, my friends, is that 5 eighths is equal to 10, I have 10 X's there, out of 16, because this entire rectangle is divided into now 16 smaller boxes. So now we can just go forth and um, evaluate our evaluate our expression. We've shown that one and one half, I'm going to rewrite it over here, is equal to 24 sixteenths. I've shown in like a very awkward, stretched out sort of way that 5 eighths is equal to 10 sixteenths. We have 10 boxes crossed out here. Five rows, two columns is equal to 10 boxes. Our denominators are 16 because now both of the, the this rectangle and this rectangle separately are separated into 16 smaller boxes. Uh, 24 minus 10, 14. Our answer should be 14 sixteenths. Let's see how many boxes we have left over. Was that our answer for the last one? That's very interesting. Um, I'm going to use something thin because we don't have much space to work with. Um, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we have 14 boxes left over, let's say. So, According to our calculations, our uh, difference should be 14. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, oop, 9, 10, 11, 12, yes, 13, 14, indeed. Our difference here is 14 sixteenths. Jackson has 14 sixteenths. Uh, 14 sixteenths of a meter left over for his next project. Um, please, for secret word, tomorrow, check in. What is the big difference between lesson five and six? What did we stop modeling as far as uh, giving someone his or her own model? What did we discontinue in lesson six? We actually stopped modeling something very specifically. Uh, I'm drawing this to remind you. Uh, we stopped drawing something very specifically um, in our subtraction models. Uh, so keep up the great work, you guys. You're amazing. Please keep being amazing. Uh, have an amazing evening, and I will see you uh, tomorrow.